And then by everything that I witnessed and experienced, it was George Bush who was in control of our country through three administrations because Ronald Reagan answers to George Bush. Then George Bush was in office himself. And after that, Bill Clinton went into office. And I heard Bill Clinton and George Bush once discussing the, how when the American populace became disillusioned with Republicans in, in control of our country, bringing us into the new world order, that Bill Clinton, as a Democrat, would be put into office. And it was also my experience to have witnessed Bill Clinton answering to George Bush. So we certainly... She also claims that Bill Clinton was under mind control. In covertly recorded off-air transmissions from the Bush-Clinton presidential election campaign in the 1990s, we can see that Bill Clinton was nothing more than a puppet to the puppet masters which placed him in the White House. Bill Clinton's demeanor seems to be similar to a person who is under a hypnotic trance.
Thousands of government-sponsored experiments did take place at hospitals, universities, and military bases around our nation. Some were unethical, not only by today's standards, but by the standards of the time in which they were conducted. They failed. The origins of psychological warfare uh, were in Nazi Germany. And in the Nazi ideology, they had something that was called Weltanschauungskrieg, which means worldview warfare. The idea for them was imposing the Nazi worldview on the countries that they had occupied. The Americans picked up this idea, created an American version of it, and called that psychological warfare. Trying to understand psychological warfare and trying to understand the American approach to post-war efforts to control people's minds, both as individuals and on a mass scale, there's a lot of illusions about how that was done. Were Nazis involved in that process? Yes, they were. Pretty paperclip was a United States government sanctioned CIA operation for the importation of Nazi and fascist scientists into the United States. Their statement was simply this, if we don't bring these people into this country and contain them, then our enemies, the Soviet Union, will get them. first wave was to bring these scientists. There were 700 odd propulsion scientists. And then there were some 600 and some odd mind scientist people that they brought in. The CIA was given a responsibility of actually placing the individuals that had a project paperclip into the military industrial complex, including our colleges and universities. Mind control was a psychological warfare weapon that Adolf Hitler regarded as the answer for taking over the entire planet. The name for the mind control research in this country was MKUltra. MKUltra was one program, a series of programs that came out of the CIA to experiment with different types of mind control using drugs, using electroshock, using insulin shock, and, and other techniques. I think that the goal for those people who planned the program was very straightforward. It was an attempt to figure out a way to interrogate people and to learn how to protect their own agents against control by others. If you put someone in a position of being disabled by not feeding them or not allowing them to sleep or overwhelming them with sound, if you use massive shock treatment and you give people massive doses of drugs such as PCP or mescaline or amphetamines or LSD, and if you put them in periods of darkness where they can't predict from one minute to another what is going to happen next, so they're always dreading, there's no consistency to sort of what's going to happen, anybody can be put in a position of being open to brainwashing. Trying to understand psychological warfare and trying to understand the American approach to post-war efforts to control people's minds, both as individuals and on a mass scale. There's a lot of illusions about how that was done. Were Nazis involved in that process? Yes, they were.